Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live. Today I want to give you uh, the breakdown of the animations that I show you that I published yesterday on YouTube. So you might have seen this animation. It's basically this dancing girl with a Mixamo animation mocap applied to this girl. And there's a bit of animations with the eye and expression. I think the expression is not 100% working. And there's a penetration. But basically I was Try, uh, trying to learn about the uh, imp uh, USD import that's uh, being featured on the latest version of Blender 3.0 Alpha and I'm using this scene uh, the, the kitchen scene um, which is the USD example from Pixar that's available online you can download it uh, the scene itself consists like consists with uh, like hundreds of objects <clears throat> maybe even like a thousand of objects and this is a really good example of how 3D, 3D scenes <clears throat> come together from hundreds of assets sometimes with Pixar or in a big feature animations you might have like hundreds of thousands or even like millions of assets and you you will be dealing with a lot of materials etc et and with Blender USD import which is now kind of something that you can try. This is still like work in progress, I think. You can just load it instantly. Okay, so it's a, it's really interesting to study to, and to understand about 3D animations, okay, from there. So let's uh, let's take a look at the, the actual file. I need to go to my downloads. Pixar USD. So we have this uh, kitchen set from Pixar, and I happen to be using the latest version of Mac OS Monterey. So the latest version of Monterey uh, actually enable you to look at uh, USD scenes using Preview. Okay, so I'm looking at the scene now, and I'm still still getting used to these navigations. Um, this is actually the preview and it's using the Hydra, what do they call it, Apple, Apple, Apple. Let me take a look at the documentation very quickly, Hydra Storm Render, okay. So it's using Metal on my iMac M1, so it's basically, it's being able to load USD in the preview before we even bring it into DCC app like Blender or Maya or Houdini. So it's, see, this is really fast preview. And if you take a look, uh, show the preview options. Okay, not here. Maybe I should like right click, open with preview. So this is an app. So it's loading the scene very, very quickly. And with this, I can actually take a look at the list of objects in the scene so there's hundreds hundreds of objects right and the cool thing is that I can actually double click and take a look at all the objects based on the name so for example uh, so I'm still this is like a preview in Mac OS Monterey. You might not have it if you are not using Mac, but I'll gonna, I'm gonna show you. You can search by name of the objects, for example, like bottle, and I can find the bottle, for example. And if I want to have this bottle, I can just file, export it as USD and name it bottle. Later on, I'm gonna show you uh, we can load it inside Blender. Maybe let's try to. Oh, okay, it just crashes. But anyway, so we need to have Blender 3.0 Alpha. Okay, and so with 3.0 Alpha latest version, we can import USD, Universal Scene Description. Okay, and we can. Go to Pixar USD and then find the kitchen set. Just simply load the file. Uh, there's a couple of options. 
camera curves light materials so it is it's actually enable you can actually load the materials vertex color all right there's also import USD preview oh, anyway just import it and just within a second we load the scene okay the scene is actually loaded but without the materials maybe the material is not included but we should actually have at least have the name of the materials that it, it tries to load we have all the scenes here with all these lines um, because uh, that's the relationship lines in blender maybe we just turn turn it off for now so we have all the objects being loaded if you want to use the random color you can turn it on you can if you can you can also use different material matcap so you can see clearly every objects every different part um, of the objects and assets then be that's being loaded so the scene like I said doesn't come with material or lighting that's something that you want to add yourself if you actually search for Pixar kitchen you will see a lot of variations with different lights and this is like really good example of how different artists load the scenes and then render it using different engine and each one of the assets have different texture and variations and oh yeah this is from the incredibles interesting okay very cool study and you can actually in, in you can do that inside blender right now so i don't have maya or houdini or zebras or other 3d package so i'm just currently juggling be between different blender this is blender 3.0 of course with the this is the latest one alpha version and this one can load the usd pixar usd i'm using blender 2.93 because this is like the official blender that's gonna be this one will have like long support and i'm using this version why because 2.93 i use this for productions and a lot of add-ons actually works with blender 2.93 including mixamo for the character animations here i'm actually using the fear 2 camera this one was connected to my iphone and i'm doing this real-time camera on my iphone and then kind of zooming in on this chair this is where i'm gonna put my character the girl character dancing and yeah you can actually see some floating dust somewhere here oh actually that's my computer monitor <laughs> anyway too long on a computer uh <clears throat> so we have a camera animated camera you might have like multiple multiple camera like uh this here we have like a fly through of the camera okay this is this was created using the iphone the help um okay and i haven't put material on the scene yet but i can create another camera if i want to let's uh, view uh, align active camera to view actually uh, i want to go inside this camera first of all i want to switch to the other camera the new one and then view align active camera to view all right i want to adjust this camera and maybe okay just imagine we have we have uh, an, an object here on the chair like for example monkey head it's gonna be where my character is dancing so we have the second camera let's get out of the camera so we have the fly through camera and then we have the close-up camera we could actually select select the camera and then command B in blender so we can set up so that's gonna be kind of linking the camera into the markers I'm gonna select the second camera over here control B 
So this camera it's gonna be my second camera. Let's let me get rid of this marker. So if we look through the active camera here we can see the fly through is working and then at this point with the marker we can switch to the second camera and if I try to save if I'm not wrong if I export this out as USD we actually will have that <clears throat> so it's a Pixar kitchen camera with uh, two cameras let's export the USD <clears throat> just a quick proof that this is actually working see this is I think the camera from Blender oh okay still glitching open with preview this is the camera from Blender okay just to prove the point this is actually working even, even though the animation itself doesn't quite work um okay let's uh <coughs> where was i okay the we have the camera and then we also okay the camera animations came from my iphone and i'm using this app called fear to camera okay that's done and i also have the rig which i which is also from pixar uh let's let me open it up yeah okay this one it's a girl this girl is actually um it comes from pixar usd asset example as well human female so we have the the girl walking we have the the one in the default default pose okay we have this one is a uh, in idle position just standing so i i actually try to bring it in Okay, we actually have the texture. I didn't, I didn't load the texture uh, for this character, but uh, I don't think it loads. But anyway, I want to show you. Okay, I'm using Mixamo Rigger because with Mixamo Rigger, uh, the nice thing is that we can quickly rig it online. We add bones and etc., and then we can load uh, like a like a mo motion capture animations and we can quickly apply it to the to the character on top of this i actually have the my face it facial rig um, that i can apply to this character so i will try to give you an example so i have downloaded downloaded some of the motion capture animations like this maybe hip hop dancing this is the animations of the character when I upload it to Mixamo I just use this full body instead of exporting with hair eyeballs we just need this body so what's gonna happen next with if we are using Mixamo control rig we can source the other skeleton you can drag and drop it from here and select our character and just simply apply animations to the control rig so this is like a kind of part of like a pipeline you have like animations you have character rig and you are applying the animations to the character and then i can delete can delete the the original oh i can delete the motion capture from the other one because this is already applied to this character so this is of course just like a motion capture animations maybe uh, in reality I, I mean sometimes you actually want to manually animate the character right maybe character suddenly kind of stop dancing yeah anyway you did you can do whatever and just gonna show you the animation usually takes some time to pause and to figure out the timing of the animations or oh, the whole business of animations 
at least the uh, the character is rig and you can it has all the controls for you to pose and animate right so you have the animations and you can actually export it out or bring it together into another scene like uh, for the final render I'm using blender 3.0 of course like I said I don't have multiple DCC apps all I did was using different blender and bring everything together so I have the camera here zooming into the character this is in the preview mode I can switch to I can turn off all these extras objects I can switch to this render viewport shading the character now looks a little bit better sorry about this animation of the arm penetrating the head um, I added a bit of materials I mean just the basic material basic PBR but you can see the sheer amount of this uh, the complexity that you might have to deal with if you have like a sh uh, you have 3d scenes you might have like multiple shots for your animations short film or full feature animations but imagine this okay maybe this is like a, just a simple character dancing um, but you might have like a different type of lighting different camera and different shots with different shots maybe your character is sitting down on the chair like sleeping and this is just like uh, her imaginations she become like, like this miniature you can make any you can make up any kind of story basically because it's a uh, 3d animations but anyway uh where was i view look through the camera so this is just a preview i actually turn on ambient occlusion that's why it's a little bit slow also and there's also depth of field so the camera is now focusing on the girl i have this empty so let's take a, take a look at the camera it's focusing on the objects called focus this empty objects I can move this focus somewhere else but that's how I control the depth of field basically I can increase the focus higher so everything is now sharp but it's it's nicer before so just the focus is on this character and this is a viewport shading of EV render in Blender. So we can render this out using EV or cycles. There, those two are uh, the the default render engine in Blender. And we can turn on the denoising. This is the viewport denoising. It's real time rendering on my machine. Your machine might be faster or slower, but this is doing it using the M1 CPU GPU it's not too bad it's just a few seconds you can get like a really high quality render but for this preview purpose I'm just using EV and EV is like almost real time because it's like a like a game engine style of rendering engine we got the shadow a little bit uh, and because I think I have only a single camera uh, single area light I can change the color if I want to so I just put the area light down there it's okay like for this this scene with the miniature character just a simple scenes but anyhow yeah that's the I think that should explain the pipeline so with blender 3.0 we can basically bring in USD uh, file format uh, this this is kind of like an exchange file format that should work for every DCC app Zebras Houdini Maya I don't know if Cinema 40 support it also maybe um, if you have like simulations from different app you can bring it into blender and it should work it should just work remember I exported the bottle earlier today I mean in this video 
so this is the the bottle look I just bring it in into the scene but uh, even though the, the size is a bit wrong and <laughs> it took a while to put it there uh, okay here's the deal okay uh, when dealing with a lot of objects you are you are only looking at the scratch for example if you want to select an object here and you want to see something very quickly there's actually a trick you can use dot tap dot on the keyboard and you can actually get into that object very very quickly so this is for example the toaster if you for example you want to move this chair select that chair and then just tap move the mouse over to outliner and then tap dot now you are here you can select the chair so there are, there are two chair in the scene this is if you are like a pipeline or asset manager working in a studio you will love the this universal scene description so basically you're going to be handling hundreds thousands or millions of assets think of it like assets from sketchfab or other places you need to manage all these assets that's on the hard drive you you download it and put it in the hard drive and you want to bring it into blender and this is something that you can uh, you can work with all all of these assets using usd okay so this is where the power is really is and you don't actually just stop there because for example if the if the director doesn't like this chair and we we want you want to use like a different chair with usd you can you can make like a a change like a layer of variance for ex for example the chair is like a different color normally you just select the uh the material and just make changes right but in reality you might actually already have material library and you can you want to switch the material very very quickly and the material can have hundreds of different texture and you want to have like a different variants so that's where usd really become really powerful this kind of workflow um yeah i think i i i work as like an asset person at so, uh, some point even though i didn't go through all the details but still the idea is to be able to separate every components like for example this character is simply just dancing but if you if you want to load uh, the character with different animations you want to have like a maybe you have like 10 different animations variations and you want to look at it very quickly you can use usd you should be able to use usd at some point all right so yeah i think that's pretty much it um unless i forget something let's see if i'll import usd what else there is this paris bear what is this oh this one is actually from sketchfab at some point i i accidentally convert it into usd oh okay 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 <laughs> you might remember this from my previous video <laughs> this is the scene that i compose using blender and i export it out into usd so we have this bear uh, with the chair doesn't have the wine glass but yeah i think this is actually quite funny the fact that we can bring it in is pretty cool it's not parented into an empty so wow look at this I just want to put this on the table so you can imagine managing all these assets can be tricky <laughs> look at this 
So weird. Okay, just weird aliens on the tables on the Pixar kitchen. If we want to, we can also just bring in Suzanne. I will do one more thing. 3D cursor, very underrated feature. You can click it on anywhere and you can you can play Suzanne on the table, for example. Okay, so it's not complete without Suzanne. Okay, so this is the setup. Suzanne, let's give it a color and material. So it's all about, so the USD is for the pipeline for your studio or for your work to be able to manage hundreds, thousand, millions of 3D assets and materials and camera and lighting and animations and simulations all within one pipeline. So normally, normally each studio will have different pipeline to do this because they have like multiple 3D software. Also, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of things to manage. So just now I was having trouble with this bottle I should have unparented trying to scale it and trying just putting this object into place is kind of headache if you if you don't put it properly if you don't put the transform properly anyway just put this bottle maybe the girl is drunk and then she fell asleep maybe she is in the lockdown here in the lockdown inside the kitchen She's tired and she falls asleep and then she become this little miniature girl and dancing on the chair. That's my story, I guess. Alright. So and of course don't forget with USD you are also you can use instancing. So if you have how many objects is this? If you if you want to take a look at statistics, we have three we almost have 3,200 objects. We have 3 million triangles polygon on the scene now. It's pretty cool, uh, pretty impressive that we can do that very quickly and all very efficient. This is actually part of Pixar USD to be able to load it very quickly and then make changes very quickly. So at the moment, so we, we can see the kitchen set with all the props, everything is neatly put here under the locator. So we can take a look. Okay, we can we can collapse all this. But the idea is that if you if you are really good with the assets, you you can use Python, and then for example, you want to quickly. Okay, I want to quickly find a certain assets and then replace it with something else for example this mug i want to find it very quickly okay this is the oh it's called flower pot okay i want to replace this with a teapot for example you should be able to do that quickly using usd okay so for now the usd is just import export in blender and the export is actually just super basic at the moment so this gonna the options will will be become more complex but for the import we have more options camera curve light material masses volume uv so we can actually already import the materials which is interesting just we cannot export the material yet if you want to know um i have one okay Apple USDZ I this is from Apple example this is USD that's already become USDZ and this become an AR something that you can display on your iPhone and if we are using reality this is an animations that's being generated using reality composer app animated with sound with animations 
this is something that can become an AR. For now, if we want to look at this robot, if we open it up with Xcode, we can actually export it into Blender. Mm. Let me show you. This is inside Xcode. Xcode is only available for developer. You can export it as USD. Okay. Let's create a new folder. Just export the USD. This is file. This is Blender 3.0 file. Import USD. Okay, this is our robot. And this guy doesn't have proper material. Let me check very quickly. Face orientation is correct. Okay. Cool, cool. File export DAE. This one will actually extract the texture. Okay, all the, the diffuse, etc. You just need to put it back together. So this is the DAE. Mm. Yeah, I just want to show you that you can actually extract the the uh, the assets just for example, but we might lose the animations, we might lose the materials and all the, the linking with the Apple USDZ, however, uh, the cool thing is that you can put everything into one package. Animations, sounds on whatever behavior that it might have, physical behavior or even like interactivity, it all will come as a single package for AR. So that's really the cool part. So it doesn't stop there you might be able to control, remote control this robot using your iPhone or iPad, right? So that's the power of USD, the power of uh, Pixar USD pipeline. I recommend you to take a look at this video. Uh, this is Apple video, create 3D workflow with USD. Take a look, have a read. Uh, actually not have a read. You can have a read from the transcript. Basically, you can, um, when USD works with all the, the apps out there, with NVIDIA and Adobe, everything's going to work together. You can, this is an example with an, of a scene with hundreds, millions of objects uh, that you can quickly preview using Hydra Storm. And then, yeah, like if you're working with Blender, like, like me, like myself, I don't use Maya or Houdini. I don't have access f to those apps. Um, I work within my limitations in Blender, but yeah, we got, we got pretty much everything, the tools to create animations. So that's really what I, I'm trying. I've been trying to uh, think for the past few years. You have all the tools basically from Sketchfab or whatever. If you want to model your 3D objects yourself, you can. You can model your own characters. You can um, animate and rig and then set up everything. You, so you basically have everything. You just need to spend some time to actually make a film or short film or animations, whatever. For TikTok or for Netflix or whatever you want or for YouTube. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Would... Uh, what do you think about this USD and pipeline and everything, all this 3D stuff? What do you think? Um, is this something you want to do? This is 3D animations and you don't stop there because if you're just working on a film, you might just set up camera and light and you just render, render it, right? But if you work for like game studio, if game studio adapt, adopted this USD pipeline, then you can you, you continue working with the USD 